The holidays have come and gone, winter's here with a vengeance, we've systematically broken each and every one of our New Year's resolutions. Welcome to 2019. But before I get into the new games of the year and half-heartedly attempt to finish a few from the last, let's take a look back, all the way back to a little over two weeks ago, and talk about the games I played in December of 2018. I thought this one would be fun to start with, what with all the is it a show or is it a game think pieces I've seen. For those of you who don't know, Bandersnatch was an episode of the Netflix Twilight Zone-a-thon called Black Mirror. Bandersnatch, however, stood out due to its format as essentially a choose-your-own-adventure game, with you making the decisions for the main character and ultimately getting into some heavy fourth-wall-breaking territory. If I'm being honest, my first reaction to non-gamers' thoughts about Bandersnatch was a small, condescending, that's cute. I don't like it, but it's true, <laughs> because it is cute. The narrative and the is-it-really-a-game theme of this Black Mirror episode will likely do nothing for anyone who's into indie games right now. This ground has been covered pretty well in games like Doki Doki Literature Club, Undertale, and Metal Gear Solid, frankly. But putting my judgmental cap away, that doesn't mean it isn't worth playing, and it doesn't mean that it isn't something special. Black Mirror, being an anthology series, has some really amazing episodes, and some tedious ones. And I wouldn't call this one of their best. However, the idea of getting non-gamers all tripped out for the first time in a format that they wouldn't normally experience? That's valuable. It probably won't convert every single person who tries it into a gamer, but when it comes to electronic experiences like this one, everybody deserves a chance to get weirded out by the machine, even people who don't know what Pony Island is. The Party Hard series is about a guy who just wants to sleep, but can't because of all the crazy loud partying that's going on nearby him. And as a result, he goes on a murder spree. You make your way through the party and dispose of people in random and creative ways. It's meant to be severely tongue-in-cheek, but the edgelord sensibilities of Party Hard 2 combined with the real-life mass slayings that go on day in and day out meant that eh, I really wasn't up for the levity that they were attempting here. Too much of the humor comes from that high school style incel hero persona who seems to think that the only problem with the world is its vapid party girls and stupid jocks. It's funny though, I played the first one and didn't mind it too much, but this time around I just didn't have the patience for it. The gameplay itself is fine, if a little obtuse. It feels like the developers were expecting you to have played the first one because they don't go out of their way to explain a lot of the ins and outs to you, which can be fun for those of you who like to figure it all out on your own, but ultimately this game just wasn't for me. Magic the Gathering Arena's beta was released last year, and I spent a lot of December playing it. I'm not the sort of fan who'll go out to play a draft or something like that, but I've played Magic long enough to enjoy a nice half hour of deck building and online play. And so far, Arena looks terrific. Anyone who's played Magic the Gathering online system knows how garbage it is, and with the promise that Arena is going to have a big esports scene, I see this as a huge improvement, with lots of opportunities for both players and spectators. There's a lot of aesthetic homage to Hearthstone, big surprise. In fact, you can tell that Wizards of the Coast took a lot from Blizzard's playbook on exactly how to implement this. It's free to play with a reasonably good system for winning free cards and gold to spend on packs. You don't have to spend a lot of your own money on it to enjoy yourself, but if you want to be competitive, you probably will. If you're a Magic fan, I'd ultimately give it a look. I don't like Assassin's Creed. I've made that clear on more than one occasion, but 
I have to admit, they did a pretty bang-up job with Rebellion, a free-to-play mobile game. At first glance, it isn't anything special. You've got chibi versions of classic Assassin's Creed characters, and you build up your home base while going through different murder contracts and progressing the story. You've seen it all before. It's a very simple game, with the usual level-up and upgrade systems you've seen before and before and before. But the style and the substance show that they're at least trying to entertain you and not just mentally trick you into spending money when you get frustrated. I played it for extended sessions without feeling the need to spend a dime, in fact. I don't know how long I'm going to stick with it in the long run, but it's been worth the time I've spent on it so far. This is a weird one, to be sure. <laughs> The idea behind Golf Club Wasteland is that the Earth is ruined due to, well, humans being humans. And you play a member of the super-rich elite who travels from Mars to play golf in the remains of the planet. It's a side-scrolling golf game with tricks and easter eggs to unlock, pretty basic stuff, but what sets it apart is the theme of satire that the developers are going for. That satire is the main reason you're going to play, if I'm being honest, and it does get a little old. Not because I disagree with the stance that the developers have taken, but because it's just a little on the nose. One of the buildings has a big glowing sign on it that reads Kofifi, and I mean, you get the idea. It's a neat attempt, though. I suppose what I like the most about Golf Club Wasteland is it shows me that we live in a world where a mobile game can attempt to make political points through golf. That's... that's kind of cool. So that was December for me. Not a lot jumping out, but if you check out my top 10 list, I think you'll see that I had plenty of good stuff to do in between a lot of these other games. I did skip a few of them, most notably Spider-Man, due to the fact that there is a full run of it in my top 10 games of 2018 list, which you should check out. What games did you play in December? What games are you playing now? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. Hey, buddy, don't sink a little drinky. Daddy gets sad and blue. Sneak a little drinky, sneakity do. Sneak a little drinky past you. Sneak a little drinky, sneakity do. Sneak a little drinky past you.